Whoa! Whew, the sun's actually out, my Joe. That looks a bit ominous. What a beautiful spot. So we're walking down the Spay Way today. Spay Way. Down the footpath. Takes you along the back of the site where the lodges are and the train tracks. And uh, these vlogs that we'll be putting out are going to be a bit bitty. It's just going to be showing you what we're up to. If we get some wildlife, I'll stick it in. But I've had a word with my mate Chris. He's going to take me to a couple of places who you've seen in the last video. And uh, he's giving me a bit of a tip off. Sorry, the old sun's in my eyes. And he's given us a tip off that there may be some crossbills in a woodland that we're heading towards that runs along the side of the River Spay. So we're having a little mooch over there this morning, a few miles walk. Get out, stretch your old legs. Rained a bit yesterday, but as you can see, there's snow on in their hills. Look at that, what a view, eh? It's absolutely stonking around here. And this is the area that you can go for a ride on the old uh, quads. Take you all around this great big field here. And uh, through the woods, Raven's having a run. So we're gonna go and have a look, see if we can see these crossbills, fantastic birds. They call them parrot crossbills, because they look a bit like a parrot. But the bill crosses over and it's a specialist for getting seeds out of uh, pine cones. So its bill crosses over, it jibs it in, pushes this bill apart, and manages to get the little seed out of in between the little sort of bits of the cone, little petals of the cone, if you like. So we're gonna go and have a look over there. But I hope you're enjoying these videos. 4,000 subscribers! <laughs> Never thought I'd get to 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much guys, really appreciate that. Really appreciate it and all your super thanks and that. It's flipping brilliant, well happy. That's the reason I do it. So I'll take you along here, apparently you walk along the woods and it's, there's a bit of a cliff face there and then the trees, the Scots Pines are in front of it. So you're sort of face height to the tops of the Scots Pines down on the lower level. So, Crossbills like to be right at the top of the trees, feeding on cones and keeping an eye out for aerial predators, because they're quite brightly coloured. So we're gonna go and see if we can see them. Anyway, if we don't see them, we'll have a nice walk and we're taking you along. Hope you like it. Dad at the back, kids at the front giving it some. Mum and Dad at the back taking it steady. So they can hide them out from the from the top there, from the centre. Proper nice, eh? Right, we're going through this little gate here. 
and we're going to head down that way where the quads have just gone because that's where the river is I want to take you to a really lovely little spot down there didn't see me nearly fall over did you really lovely spot down there right on the river's bank bit of peace and tranquility eh? What great fun to take family out on. Pucker, eh? Anyway, over there, I'll put a little bit of footage up now for you, is a dipper. It's like a thrush-like bird, white front, and it hunts underwater. I think I've got another video somewhere with a dipper on it. I'll see if I can find it and add it up here now. It's right on the other side. I'll get some shots of it for you beautiful birds and they bob up and down and find different feeding rocks and you can usually tell if they're about because you'll find a stone and it'll have bird poo on the top but it'll be in the water okay so you can usually tell if they're about they've got a pss, pss sort of noise that they make and they'll dive under the water swim under the water and collect crustaceans and caddis fly larva and stuff like that under the water and then come back up Absolutely beautiful, beautiful birds. Guess who spotted it? Sammy. I heard it and I'm looking for it and Sammy saw it. So it's just over there on a little branch sitting out in the water at the moment. Uh, happy days, nice spot that. <laughs> along the side of the river now and where it's burst this banks it's washed all this sand up onto these big banks so we have a little mooch along here because there's otter in here and also beaver so we're gonna have a little walk along these sandy banks because it's ideal tracking conditions and if anything's been about we'll see its tracks in this sand. Now keep our fingers crossed, eh?
Right, this is where I wanted to bring you. You can walk to this from Del Raddy. Water's really high this time of year. But it's still beautiful. Look at this. Lovely stony beach there. In the summertime you get all the fish. All the fry baby fish swimming around in the shallows here. In the warm waters. Absolutely beautiful. What a perfect spot for a picnic, eh? Blooming lovely up here. See for miles. Got the woods behind us, just walked up a great big hill. And it's beautiful. We're heading back now. I think we fancy a smash burger. Smash burger. Mm. Have a look at this view in the distance here. Stunning. Alright, smash burger. So we just stopped here. Oh, I don't know if you've seen them. There's a little trio of bullfinches. Male bullfinches have just landed on the floor there and they've just gone back in a the hedge. They're flying backwards and forwards. I've got some footage and some photographs of you. Three little male bullfinches. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Well happy with that spot. They're just sitting up there. That's good. Three male bullfinches. Happy days. I'll put a bit of footage up for you so you can have a look. We're not far from Chris and Alvi Forest Food now. I can smell a burger. It's just over there, look. Look at that. Doesn't matter where you look around here, there's a beautiful view. Oh, you missed that. Why oh, did you nearly fall over? <laughs> Damn it. There we go. Waiting for my burger.
double smith burger with fries. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Right. We are off to Aviemore today. A little mooch around the shops. Just getting the van sorted. I filled the wastewater tank up last night and give it a wastewater tank cleaner treatment. Thetford do it. And then like a little sachet you put in your wastewater tank. Now when I opened it, it smells and looks like biological washing powder. Which eats crud, really. And uh, anyway, I'll put it in, see how it goes. Because in these motorhomes, if you've got one, all you need is a grain of rice or a little bit of sludge on one of the sensors, especially at the top, and it will continuously show you as having a full waste tank, which I've got at the moment. So we're going to give that slosh around, go down and empty it out down the bottom because there's a really nice drive over waste, uh, grey waste disposal place down there and uh, empty the other thing as well that no one likes doing and it's always the blokes that get that job isn't it anyway we're gonna have a walk down now see what we can see so we'll take you with us and show you what's about Aviemore Right, we're here. We always park in this car park. You get three hours, massive car parking bays. Okay, pull across two. And all oh, super drugs shut. Ah. But this is a great big car park. Tiso over there, outdoor store, is my favourite shop. Got to go in now. But there's an Aldi, a home bargains, and a Costa Coffee here. And you walk out the back. And then you've got the high street there. So let's go have a look, eh? Hey? We're over there. This is a little roundabout halfway up the high street. Now you've got Blacks here, which has always got a sale when it's always closing down. I don't know if you noticed that in Blacks. You usually get a good bargain in there. That's quite a good outdoor store over there, that Nevy Sport and Trespass. Now, Nevy Sport is upstairs now, and they do all rab or Gucci kit. And Trespass is a bit more of a cheaper shop. They do all sorts of stuff up there. Up there, that big brick building, you can see, past there, the tall one, is a lovely Chinese. That's the absolute business in there. But you've got a uh, pharmacy down there and a few other bits. Oh, there's a lovely cafe on the end down there as well. So. Look at that. 
I used to have one of them. Old Land Rover, Series 3. I don't know if it's a four. No. That's a bargain, look. Hey, a storm jacket. 19 quid. Can't flip you go wrong for that, can you? It's all the shoes up the end now. Kids bit here. All your hats. Send me a line that she likes purple. Yeah, look at that, look, 19 quid. Oh she's gonna get one of them, I know it. Well, I was right. She bought that one and the one next to it, the grey one, a long one. 55 quid! Peter Storm. She's gone down from 100 odd to 55 quid. I said you've got to buy it. She's going to stash it underneath the bed. Because in a motorhome you haven't got much room, have you? I can't, I can't complain. I bought a coat. It's nice to see blacks are supporting mine as well by selling hats. Okay. And that is who I'm giving all my revenue from YouTube to this year. Day, so. I said, there you go, she's been in there. She's got a deal on both coats, which were cheap as chips, and she got 15% off discount as well. How much did she come to? 63 pounds. 63 quid. For a, yeah, so they've both been reduced in price in a sale. Bargain. Can you work me a magic in here as well? Because it's expensive in here. If she is. Hang on, mountain sports. I like it in here. Big brick building behind you there is the police station, and that one there in front of you is the public toilets. And a train station runs along here, it's a railway station there. Look. But here, I've just noticed they're putting in new houses, putting a little development in there. I don't know how I'd like to live right in the middle of. Uh, there's one right over the back there anyway, but I don't know if I'd like to live right in the middle of bloody Abbeymore. <laughs> Harry and Gow Bakery. That's new. That's new. That used to be Subway. That there. We've got Fat Bay Bank of Scotland. That's an open bank. And there's a wee sweetie shop there. I'm going to go in there. Is it open? Sweetie. Yeah, it's open. I like old fashioned sweets, if you know what I mean. Don't like, I ain't a great lover of new sweets. I like the old fashioned ones like cock cocks and aniseed twists and stuff like that. Some ways buy them off of, uh, off of Amazon. Right, I've just got to pop into Tesco's to get some uh, cat food for Chris. To feed his wee campsite cat. Are you need anything in there? I'll go in there after. Just going to go in there see if they've got some pillows for our van. Dogs allowed in here. This is all your Tweedy stuff. Thank you. Some of your Tweedy, tweedy stuff here. Oh, Hayland Coo. Well, cute. Oh, they're raven. Who's that? Mm -hmm. yes, he used to be Nevy Sport back in the day. Nice little shoddy. So down there's the garage and the train station. Big old Cairngorms Hotel. Behind there, down the road there, is the 
campsite we come to, we stayed in, what's it called? High Fields, I think. Put a link up to that now. Not popping now. I like all the expensive shops for a weird reason. Don't know why. Island Soap Company, a baker's, and apparently this fish and chip shop's really popular. Not so I've ever been in there, but there's always loads of people in there. Smells nice. And that there used to be an electrical shop, used to sell electrical products. It's shut, there's a few shops shut here I've noticed in Aviemore. There's a Boots to Chemist there as I said earlier on. And then we're over there, Sammy's just going to go and put a haul into the van. That's quite a nice little bar and uh, restaurant, dog friendly. Skindu restaurant. There's a pet shop around the corner here and a hardware store that I'm going to go into because I need a couple of bits look at this view look there's not many towns or villages in the UK towns anyway I've got a few like that look at that look and then behind us are all the mountains covered in snow flipping lovely isn't it Gonna have a look in the estate agents while I'm here. That's that Chinese restaurant up there I was telling you about. That's absolutely lovely in here. Me and our friends went into there, Jason and Jackie. And there's a and that's new, I think, that kebab and burger place. But the coffee pot there on the end, that cafe, is dog friendly cafe, that's absolutely spot on in there. The girls really look after you really good cafe so if you come here that's a good place to go we've got the wing canal over there i'm not too sure if that's dog friendly and you've got another pot pub down there the balavuin that's dog friendly and they sell like pub grubby type stuff but still waiting for sammy come on girl Now Rod was a barman at a Pine Martin bar down in uh, Glenmore. Down the road went missing this time last year and he's disappeared off the face of the earth. So if you recognise that chap, get in contact with a the number there. Because we went looking for him everywhere. Everyone's been searching for the lad. He left the club down there, left his coat in the club and it went down to minus 15 that night or the night after it's just disappeared off the face of the earth I put a video up I did at that campsite down there because I did a little bit of a chat about him then but again if you see him or we've got information regarding it give that number a call or call the Pine Martin bar uh, yeah such a shame he's a really nice lad right character Argentilian chap so so easy to go missing up here so easy this is proper wilderness if you get caught out on these hills although you're quite close to civilization if you're not prepared that's your lot you can get lost and disorientated really quickly so just a little word of warning to you still waiting for sammy so there's an electrical shop there now you can buy your bits and bobs out well, that's a nice pet shop there, Pampered Pets, and that's Spayware, uh, Spay Valley Hardware shop. That's got everything in there, all your bits and bobs if you need to repair anything. So, just gonna have a look in the coffee pot. Right, snipping into B&M. Oh, sorry, Home Bargains and Tissot, the outdoor store, and then we're heading back because we've had some little visitors on our pitch. And I've just bought another bit of camping uh, camera kit to use in the van and while I'm out and about. 
so I want to get a bit of video of those little guests and I'll show you who they are later hopefully Really nice cafe up here and this shop dog friendly so come in here and get your grub spend your money it's all the ski stuff up here yeah so it's a big old shop kayaks Do love an outdoor store. Right, so we're back at back at site now. I'm just going to give you a little tip. Save yourself some money and also keep you warm in your motorhome. Right, now we've got a dash cover. Okay, covers over the whole of your bulkhead dash. Covers your little vents because that's where the breeze goes through. Okay, goes right away down there, look, to the floor. I'll show you the other side. We have a fire lighter. Lovely. So glad it's not just like this. Woo! Okay, covers the vent on the other side, covers the steering wheel, and goes right down underneath this bottom bit there, and covers the floor. Okay, that stops all your breezes coming through your dashboard and preserves your heat in your van now if you're to buy one of those okay buy a proper one of those they are hundreds I think you can only get them from Germany they don't do them in the UK but that right was 13 quid and that's a two-seater sofa cover now it needs to be at least 165 long on the width to cover your dashboard for a uh, for a Peugeot Boxer or a Fiat Ducato, but that absolutely keeps you so toasty and stops that breeze coming through, gets your legs cold. Yeah. So top JP tip: we put that up in the winter, and then what we do is we put a few bits down the front, down the front there when we spin the chairs round, just to hold the bottom in, and that preserves all your heat. So JP top tip for motorhome travel. Cheap as flipping chips. I think our one was about 13, 14 quid for that one. They've gone up a little bit now. They're about 20, 24 quid. I'll put a link in the information below so you can have a look. But that's JP's. Do it yourself. Thermal dashboard cover. All them years of being an engineer come in handy, didn't it? Happy days, keep you nice and toasty. Oh, and also, if you put your wine and your beer behind it, close to your dashboard, keeps them freezing cold. Win-win. Right, so I hope you like that little tour around Aviemore. Lovely there, isn't it? I love it. Bit of info there for you as well. But I'm going to get a fire going now. Now, the other year for my birthday, Sammy brought me a little fire pit and I'll spin you around and show you it at the moment and see what you reckon. So this is the fire pit. Now, I'm not short of a fire pit, but this goes in the van lovely. Right. So most fire pits you need on campsites are have to be off the floor. Okay. This one opens up like this. It's right off the floor and you can actually touch the ground underneath it 
once you've got it up. So I'm just going to put it up now and show you how it all goes together. And I'll get a little fire in there. That's all you need to keep you warm. It's very damp here, so let's get a fire going, eh? Do love a fire. And the legs go through each other. And it sits like so. Now you use fly, fire though, it's this type of fire lighter. Let's get the old fire going. Now I taught bushcraft and survival for 20 odd years, 25 years probably. And there's no way you can cheat when you light a fire. Okay, it's damp everywhere around here. You have to take a suitable fire lighting source to get you going. So there's no such thing as cheating when it comes to lighting a fire. So we're gonna light it with those, get some kindling on there, get some log, couple of logs on there. We're gonna have a nice one. Might even cook me steaks on it. Right. Right, so we get these lit. And these are just your normal sort of box standard barbecue lighting fuel blocks. Now, even when wet, these light. So they're a good thing to have in your kit. I'm just gonna put some kindling on this now. Now this is, can all be purchased from the shop up the top. And you crisscross it so you can let the air get through it. And you see that black smoke coming off there, that's the oils in the fire lighting blocks. So it's as easy as that. Don't muck about. Don't muck about. Don't. Now I can do bow drill, fibre friction, and all sorts of different fire lighting techniques, which I might teach you later on. I might show you those. But in a survival situation, don't muck about. The lighter and an accelerant such as these blocks or lighter fuel or something like that is exactly what you want to get you going. Get going quick, get warm, get your water purified and your food cooked, don't muck about. Now put a couple of bigger logs on, this is obviously pine. So, get that going, job done, job's a good one. Now this little fire pit, you can see there, all stainless steel. And it's illuminators of the Pacific Northwest. Established 1971. Comes in that little canvas bag. Slips in my back box really nicely. And there we go. No mucking about. <sighs> Splendid. So as I said, you don't need much more bigger than that. It's probably just over a foot, probably half a metre in length. Get three decent sized logs on there and that'll keep you going for ages. It's throwing out loads of heat now, it's absolutely lovely. But all you need to be is warm. You don't want these great big fires where you have to sit 16 foot away from it to keep warm. So here we are, Dal ready in the Cairngorms, by the fire, having a chillaxing evening. Happy days. There's our Raven. Raven! Yeah, he's on guard. Look at that. Beautiful. Sammy? All chilled out. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed that vlog. Lots more to come. We've got some really good stuff coming up. You'll really enjoy it. Nice and chilled out and peaceful. But again, you stay safe, stay sane. Look after yourselves, look after each other and journey well. We'll catch you on the next vlog, eh? All the best. Love you all. Bye.